Hallelujah. Words cannot even capture just how mighty you are. Hallelujah. As the elder was speaking in tongues, I just thank you, Lord, that you allowed me to hear something that you said in those tongues, that you are mighty and that you are great. Oh, God, we love you this morning. We praise your holy name and hallelujah. We ask you to bless us, Lord, with this word. Change us, Lord. Renew us today. Touch your people, Father God, that need a touch. Hallelujah. We're seeking something, Lord, and we often don't know what we're seeking. But Lord, I, I, I pray that they look to you, that they seek your anointing, seek your presence. Hallelujah. And everything that they do. Father, we humble ourselves. We know that you are worthy of all the praise. And Lord, we have praised other things this week. Because of that, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask, Father God, hallelujah, that you would receive our repentance this morning. Hallelujah. Anoint this place with your presence. The yokes would be broken. Burdens would be removed. Eyes would be opened. Bodies would be healed. Finances would be restored. Families would be brought back together. Lord, we thank you this morning. Father, we pray for this pandemic, this pandemic climate. We pray for the those that have decided that they're not going to wear masks, that they're not going to receive the shot, that they're not, hallelujah, <clears throat> going to do the things that are required to be safe. So I pray over them today. I pray, Father, that you would protect those, Lord, hallelujah, and that you would heal and deliver this nation, hallelujah, out of this situation, this this. This climate of, of hallelujah, uncleanliness, unrighteousness, unholiness. Deliver this nation, Father. I look upon each and every leader that you've given a platform to make change. Change their hearts. Break up the fallow ground. Remove the stony hearts, Father God. We need a restoration. We need a revival. We need rejuvenation in this nation. And so, Father God, is hallelujah, your word says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, it availed much. And so, Father, we believe this morning that you're going to heal, that you're going to set free, that you're going to deliver, and that you're going to bless in Jesus' name. And so we give you the praise and thanks. Oh, God's people say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to draw your Bibles with me to Joshua chapter number one. Amen. And I want to read verse number three. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter number one, verse number three. Amen. Again, I greet you all in the holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Greg Anderson, Apostle Anderson from the Rock of Tampa Bay. Here at 3838 West Humphrey Street, amen, Temple, Florida. I believe it's 33617 is our zip code. Amen. I pray that, hallelujah, amen, if you have a request, you can mail it in to us, amen. If you have a prayer request, you can do that. You can also go out on our website, amen, the Rock of Tampa Bay org. amen, and you can send your prayer request in that way if you desire to. So God bless you. Joshua chapter number one, verse number three, and it simply says, every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that that I have given unto you. Amen. Amen. For a thought this morning, I want to use too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> Let me say that one more time because nobody got excited when I said that. Too blessed to be stressed. The Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The title of my text, I'm too blessed to be stressed. 
It was a favorite expression among Christians before the pandemic. Today we hear this less and less as the death toll, it continues to grow and no one knows when and how the pandemic war will end. The people of the world have plenty of reason to be stressed. Worldwide, we're surrounded by the ferocity and the aggressiveness of an enemy that we cannot see as he is on the rise again. I don't know if y'all been watching the news, but the death tolls are going up again. Hospitalizations are going up again. Our days, they seem uncertain as we await our turn to receive the scientific miracle called the vaccine. But let me tell y'all something. It's not a guarantee to stop the pandemic because there are new strands every single day. And many people choose not to get the vaccine. And so thus, stress is a built-in part of our modern society. And so as we live in a very competitive structure, world where winning is everything, that's how we see it, ain't it? We got to win. Amen. Parents, we press our children for straight A's. Yeah. College and professional sports, they've become mega bucks in our enterprise today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You see parents te teaching their kids how to play baseball and basketball and football. Yeah. Amen. They, they're, they're taking them to all of the lessons. Amen. They're playing in all of the different type of tournaments and different things. Yeah. Amen. It has taken priority over God's kingdom. True. And so the pressure of winning at all costs has been the gateway to a life of drugs, alcohol, steroids, cheating, and much more. And com competition is not only, it, it not only causes stress, because our competitive nature, many other issues lead to stress. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's the loneliness of feeling unloved and unwanted. Yeah. There's some folks Hallelujah, I know for sure that feel that way. There is the fear of being rejected. Nobody wants to be rejected. Everybody wants to be embraced in some way, fashion, or form. There's the frailty of low self-esteem, afraid of not being good at something, afraid of not being accepted by our peers. All of us want to be liked by our peers. Amen. We want to have people around us that say, we like you, we enjoy being with you. You bring something to the table that I desire to have. All of us want to be in that situation. Amen. If we want answers for how to com combat stress, how to remain blessed in the midst of stress, we need only look to God's word for answers this morning. No one could have been more stressed than Joshua in our text. He had to fear the shoes of Moses, a leader unlike any other. Joshua had to have been Moses' protege, and he had watched in earnest as Moses led the Israelites to the very brink of the promised land. But with Moses dead, the responsibility for leading the people of God over Jordan and into the promised land fell on Joshua's shoulders. Can I pause right there for just a moment? You know, I'm not going to always be here. Elder Newkirk, Pastor Newkirk is not going to always be here. Pastor Atkins is not always going to be here. There's going to come a day, hallelujah, where those of you that have been called in the ministry are going to have to step up and take charge and lead the group to the next level or it's going to be lost. Amen. Oh, can I say that one more time? Amen. You're going to have to step up and lead the group or it's going to be destroyed. And so back to my text. Hallelujah. See, there will be a day Hallelujah, when some of us are gone. Yeah. And the responsibility of the gospel message 
will be on the shoulders of those that are left behind just like Joshua. Amen. God spoke to Joshua as he had spoken to Moses. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. He couldn't have put it no simpler than that. I mean, he just, hallelujah, he put it where the goats could get it. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, get up, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to you. What would you have done with such a great responsibility? How did Joshua do this? Joshua led, he let the Lord speak to him, church, and he listened. See, that's why it's important that as we preach to you young folk, that you receive the word of God. Because there's going to come a time where you've got to stand on your own two feet. There's going to come a time where you're going to have to lead your children down the path of righteousness or down the path of unrighteousness. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I ain't getting too many amens on that. It's quiet right now, but it's all right. As we look at this new chapter in life, in the life of Joshua, we too can let the Lord speak to us about how to deal with the stress of life. First of all, church, we have to believe in God's promises. What has God told you? What has God put in your spirit? What has he told you? that you need to do and he's going to help you do. Amen. First of all, you've got to accept your position as a child of God. God told Joshua this. He said, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 5. Man, wouldn't it be good to know that God is speaking a word like that to you? Amen. And so God made it clear that Joshua, to Joshua, that God should be his priority. He assured Joshua on the first day of his new role as the leader of the Israelites, that he would, ne he would never be alone, hallelujah, in his God-appointed position of leadership. And so he guaranteed that he would always be with him. And the new Kirk, when I'm gone, I pray that the Lord is always with whoever the leader is. See, Joshua's life was filled with stress. Oh, he had it hard, brother. He respected leader Moses. Hallelujah. And now this leader had died. He's like, what am I going to do now? He was grieving over the loss of a dear friend. He was feeling the pressure of his role as the leader of Israel. You know, I remember when my mother passed away and I was having that conversation with myself. What am I going to do now? Because I can't talk with her any longer. She's not here. And yet I can still hear her voice in my head saying, trust in the Lord. Man, my goodness. And so here this man was, he was feeling the weight and the responsibility of being a spiritual counselor and guide to a stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Man, he was stressed. Oh, my goodness. But Joshua, he knew better than to trust his own abilities. He put all of his trust in the Lord and he made it clear to the people he served that the Lord was in control. Man, ain't nobody like the Lord. You want God to be in control of your situation. See, when God is in control, you don't have to worry about how it's going to end up. When God is in control, you don't have to worry about, do I have enough? When God is in control, 
You don't have to worry about, do I have enough time? Yes. See, when God is in control, you don't have to worry about, what is my next move? Yeah. Oh, Y'all don't hear me in here this morning. Amen. So your position as a child of God, it is a precious place to be in. God makes the same promise to us that he made to Joshua. In his letter to the Hebrew, the author, most likely it was Paul that wrote this. He said, be content with such things as ye have. For God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 5. That's for me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. So there is no need for us to be stressed. When we're serving under the power of Almighty God. You may have to face some tough times, church. But the battle is not yours. It's his. Yeah. Just trust in the Lord. Amen. And God will give us all the support we need to face our adverse situations. He'll give us all the encouragement we need to face our enemies. Yeah. He'll give us all the power we need. To face our daily pressures. He'll give us all the comfort that we need to endure persecution. And he'll give us all the wisdom we need to face the world and defeat our, our, our own enemies. Amen? Amen? So, don't be stressed, church. Accept your position as a child of God. And God will never leave you nor forsake you. Believe in God's promises. The second thing is believe in God's power. God has dunamis power. Amen. See, elevate your faith level this morning. You've got to elevate how you see your situation. You've got to elevate how you believe God will bring you out. God, he told Joshua this. He said, have I not commanded thee he said, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whatsoever thou goest. Yes. Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 9. So I believe that he's with me, Elder Atkins. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I don't have to be stressed about situations and circumstances. I know somebody out there saying, but you don't have money issues. Hallelujah. Somebody out there saying, you don't have job issues. Yeah. Somebody out there saying, you don't have sickness issues. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you that you can be in good health yeah, and have some issues. Amen. You can have some money and have some issues. Amen. You can have a roof over your head. And have some issues. Sometimes knowing who you are and whose you are is not enough. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We need to re we need reinforcements, y'all. Sometimes you need somebody to call you and just say, The Lord told me to call you and encourage you. So three times God told Joshua. To take courage. He said be strong. And of good courage. Joshua 1 and 6. He said be thou strong. And very courageous. Joshua 1 and 7. He said be strong. And of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou, be thou dismayed. Joshua 1 and 9. It's not enough. That God thought Joshua was not. That Joshua wasn't capable of leading the Israelites. It's that God knew Joshua would face great adversity. And he would need an exceptional faith that would not fail. And that's why it's important to build up your faith. That's why it's important to surround yourself with faithful people. People that's going to encourage you. Not pull you down and not share the word of the world to you. But the word of God. Yes. See, your level of confidence in the power of God needs constant reinforcement. Amen. Pick up the Bible yes. and read it every now and then. Amen. No, I mean daily. Amen. David said, 
He told himself this. Listen to David. He said, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Yes. Psalms 118 and 8. He said, the Lord has done great things for us. Yes. Wherefore are we are glad? Psalms 126 yes. and verse number 3. Then he said, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Yes. Psalms 37 in verse number four. See, all through God's word, he encourages us to let us know that his power is with us and his presence is ever before us. And God, he told Joshua to do what Donna Lawrence tells us to do. He said, be prepared to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself, church. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Remind yourself that God is all powerful and he's omnipotent. If you do that, you will have a confidence that can never be shaken. A resource that can never be depleted yeah. and a future that will never, hallelujah, that you will never regret. Yeah. I'm looking over my life right now. Yeah. I remember when I made up my mind, Helen Newkirk, the tide. No matter how bad the situation looked. Amen. When I made up my mind to tithe, when I had more bills than I had money, then I could pay the bills. Because I made up my mind that I believe what the word says. Because God said, try me and see if I don't open up. He said, try me. Now, I done tried a lot of stuff. Hallelujah. I've been a lot of places. I said a lot of stuff. I even believed a lot of stuff. But man, when I tried God. And so finally, the third and final part is trust in God's presence. That guy lost my mic. Hallelujah. It's all right. It's all good. Amen. And so... As a man thinks, so is he. We must begin to think positively. Till now, the Israelites had been stressed over the loss of Moses. They were unsure of what lie ahead. But with confidence, Joshua accepted his position of leadership. Ah, hallelujah. See, sometimes you got to take that leap of faith. Sometimes you got to say that I'm going to trust God no matter what. Yeah. Sometimes you got to make it up in your mind that no matter how it looks, no matter what people think, yeah. hallelujah, no matter what friends I lose, I'm going to follow what God called me to be. Yeah. See, with conviction and a ring of certainty in his voice, he took God's commitments to his people. Yeah. Remember the word of Moses he said, the Lord has given you this land. Yes. See, you got to remember what the Lord had told you. What did the Lord tell you he gave you? Like Moses and the Red Sea experience, Joshua knew that this situation ahead of him wouldn't be easy. Conquering Canaan would not happen by natural means. So he didn't have the means to conquer all of the Jebusites and the Hittites and all the ites. Hallelujah. He needed God to be on his side. Yeah. And so the quest ahead will remain, hallelujah, in, 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 implicable. Hallelujah. He had to trust in God and absolute dependence upon God's miracle working power. Yeah. But Joshua, he trusted in God, the constant and abiding presence of God. Yeah. He was trusting and believing that no matter what was going on, God would be with him. He was positive that God would give him the victory. Yes. See, when you know that God is going to do what he said he's going to do, it doesn't matter how things look. Yes. You begin to trust that God is going to deliver you. God can empower you and instill and instill confidence in you. It's not my own confidence. 
So it is the confidence of God. But if you don't positively trust in the presence of God, you won't be able to instill that confidence and that conviction in others. Oh, I came to tell y'all this morning that, that I trust in the Lord with all my might. All of us who are baptized by the blood of Christ have a ministry in the kingdom of God. But to be effective, you have to be able to convey your strong faith in such a way that will draw others to Christ. Not just confidence in what Christ did for you, but confidence in what Christ can do for others. Hallelujah. I believe God can heal the sick. I believe God can raise the dead. I believe God can fix the finances of the poverty. I believe God can heal the drug addict, can deliver the alcoholic. I believe in God's word. And so when he called the people to follow his instructions, they answered Joshua saying, all that thou commanded us, we will do. And whatsoever thou sendest us, we will go. Where are all my positive thinkers in the house? Stop looking at your situation and saying your situation is already dead. You've got to look at your situation and say, God got it. God is going to deliver me. God has no room in his kingdom for naysayers and doubters. God is looking for those who believe in his promise. The and the presence of God. Uh, those who believe that God can turn uh, rags into riches, uh, bondage into freedom, uh, misery into joy, uh, famine into feast, uh, and darkness into brightness uh, of his glory. Uh, today, uh, God is calling the sinner to salvation uh, and, the, and he's saying the Savior to service. Uh, if the Lord has saved you, you ought to be in service to him. Those things which he have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and do a peace and shall be with you, our God. Hallelujah. When I came in this morning, I realized that I'm too blessed to be stressed. I got a teacher somewhere in one of my closets that says too blessed to be stressed. I got up this morning, rose early, called on Jesus, sang to my Lord, trusted in his power. Hallelujah. And because of that, he's delivered me. I am free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. Hallelujah. The devil thought he had me. But I, I'm free. I'm free in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why when I heard the song, Yahweh, hallelujah, he dropped me to my knees. The power of God, the presence of the God I serve, I know he's here. I know he's available. I know he want to set you free. Call on the name. The name of Jesus. The name of our God. Call his name somebody. Somebody ought to say Jesus. Somebody ought to say Jesus. The out of power by Sunday of mine. The Jesus. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. He's my way maker. Oh, Jesus. He's my rose of sharing. 
Oh, Jesus. He is. Hallelujah. My seal. My buckler. Hallelujah. My help. In time of trouble. This Jesus that I'm talking about. He'll set you free. He'll deliver you. He'll bless you. He'll keep you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the name. The name is Shoot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy over this house. Hallelujah, my sin. That you will be free. If you receive it, you will be set free. The Lord you serve, He'll take priority. If you clap your hands, if you shout His name, Jesus, set them free. Jesus, deliver them. Deliver them from entertainment. Deliver them from greed. Deliver them from vanity. Deliver them from hateful. Deliver them. Hallelujah. Set your people. Pile the rock. Put them in the cliff. So they can see you. When you pass by. One right of shade. Don't pass me by. Lord. Don't pass me by. I need to feel your presence. I need to know you with me. I need your hallelujah. <sighs> Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That song, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the psalmist said, I inhale and I exhale, Yahweh. Every breath I take. Hallelujah. Every breath I take and breathe out. of my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I am grateful to him. I can't thank him enough. Hallelujah for him saving me. Hallelujah. I don't know how I can express it any more than the way that I express it, but I, 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 I can't put words on it. not even actions other than serving him that I can really say do him justice hallelujah sometime when I, 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 I sit and, and I look at just photos just pictures pictures of my family hallelujah and when I say my family that's all of y'all too because I got pictures of all of y'all even Mr. Garrison. I got pictures of you too, Mr. Garrison. I got pictures of you too, Jada. Hallelujah. And when I sit back and I look at those photos, and I look where the Lord has brought us from to where we are today, even when the enemy tried to destroy some of us, we are still here. Hallelujah. When he tried to cause us to lose everything that we think is precious to us he still kept us hallelujah and not only did he keep us he adds to us hallelujah and I mean I, I, I can I can I can go back and and, 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 and and as I look around the room amen I can start with destiny amen because when, when, when I look at some of the photos I have, I mean, I go back to the baby pictures. I found a baby picture of Destiny the other day, and she must have been six 
months old or five months old. She's a little baby. But I see how the Lord has added to us constantly. And now we we got O'Shea and we got uh, 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 Makai and, and we got Derek Jr. on the way. See, God is still adding to us. Hallelujah. And sometimes we take that for granted. Hallelujah. Even when I talk about finances, not one person in the rock lost their job during the pandemic. Not one person. And if you did, you got a better job. And can I go a step further? Some of y'all got promoted during the pandemic. God opened doors. Even spite of everything that's going on. Hallelujah. Some of us, we look at our lives and we say, it just ain't enough. But if you just think about how good God has been to you, it's more than enough. Because if we were given what, what we should have gotten, we would have nothing but death. That's all we would have. But because God is so merciful, because God is so gracious, God is so kind, God is so loving. I know people right now sleeping in their cars because they refuse to serve God. And they want to call the church and ask for donations. And they've been getting the same email, the same text that all of y'all been getting, trying to encourage people, amen, to seek the Lord. See, God is your only deliverer. Ain't no man, ain't no church, 